Hello guys, Kimmister here. A while back, I promised to create an early game version of every significant build I have on my channel. So today, I decided to make a step by step guide to my pure face lighting build, the Dragon Cult Knight. This is an extremely powerful pure face lighting build, and if you haven't seen the build yet, please do so. I will leave a link for you in the description. This is a quick glimpse of what we are about to achieve. I cannot describe how satisfying and enjoyable it is playing this build. But we do have a lot of ground to cover, so without any further delay, let's see how to create an early game lighting guard in Elden Ring. You can do this as a Vagabond, Confessor or Prophet. I'm choosing the Vagabond starter class and the Golden Seed as a keepsake. First, head to the Church of Ella, then go to the gate front site of Grace. Rest and talk to Melna and get your mount. Obtain the map fragment as well as the whetstone knife from the camp. Immediately after, return to the Church of Ella and talk to the witch Rena to acquire the summoning bell and your first summoning spell. Teleport to the gate front to Chris location, head to the Storm Bell Castle and unlock the Castle Ward Tunnel site of Greece. Head over here on the map and obtain the Strength Knot Crystal Tear. Keep heading east until you reach the Dust Touched Catacombs over here. Go inside and quickly obtain the Uchi Katana. Afterward, go to the Third Church of Marika over here on the map and grab the Flask of Thunder's Physic and the Sacred Tear. Then head to Fort Height and get to the top of the tower to obtain the left half of the Dectus medallion. The knight will follow you up, use your summons to distract and defeat him to acquire the Bloody Slash Ashokho. From Fort Height, proceed to the Bridge of Sacrifice Grace location over here on the map. From there, simply head south until you reach Castle Moon Rampart, site of Grace, and use the air vent close by. Interact with the Imp statue and remove the three turtles to gain access to the tower. Reach the top of the tower and open the chest to obtain a memory stone. Go back to the Bridge of Sacrifice and this time head west and acquire the Face Knot Crystal Tear over here. Now visit the Church of Pilgrimage and the Fourth Church of Marika to obtain two Sacred Tears, then head to the Tower of Return over here on the map. Climb to the top and open the chest. You will get teleported to Lindel Royal Capital, rest at the Divine Bridge site of Grace, then teleport to the Third Church of Marika. Go behind the church and use the way gate to teleport in front of the Bestial Sanctum. Open the gate and rest at the site of Grace. Melna will visit and offers to take you to the Round Table Hall. Accept and then come back here. From the Bestial Sanctum, head south until you reach Lena's Rise over here on the map. Use the air vent and gain access to the tower through the balcony. Take the elevator to the top and open the chest to acquire the second memory stone. After that, head to the Fort Pharos site of Grace over here. Enter the fort and obtain the right half of the Dectus medallion and Radagon's sword seal talisman. Later, head to Fort Gale North over here on the map, defeat the invisible teardrop scarab to acquire Flame of the Red Man's Ash 4. Then head behind the fort and obtain Flame Grant Me Strength Incantation. Go back to Limgrave and around the Stormville Castle to reach Lorenia of the Lakes region. Head to the converted tower site of Grace over here. Use the crumbling wall to reach the top of the tower. Open the chest and obtain the third memory stone. Head north until you reach the foot of the four belfries site of Grace, and if you continue your way north, you will encounter four red jellyfish guarding the jellyfish shield. Grab the shield and run back. Afterward, make it to the top of the hill with the four belfries and obtain the imbued sword key from the chest. 
We are about to execute our first wrong warp to gain access to some of the late game areas that will take the regular player hours to reach. So try to follow the next few steps carefully. I'm currently playing on the PC with a PlayStation 4 controller. Open your map and press triangle to bring up the size of Grace list. Select Castle Ward Tunnel and press R3 to add it to the marked size of Grace list. Now, if you open your map and press triangle twice, you will auto select Castle Ward Tunnel side of Grace. And on PC, you need to press X twice to teleport there. Now, this is important. You have to rest by the side of Grace close to the chest where we obtained the imbued key and make sure memory of grace is on your action bar. Make your way down the hill and use the imbued key on the imp statue to activate the way gate and use it to teleport to crumbling farm Azula. After getting teleported, use the memory of grace then quickly open your map and press triangle twice and then X button twice to teleport to castle war tunnel site of grace. If you have done it successfully, you will be teleported in front of the fog wall and not at the site of Grace. In that case, quit the game to the title menu and log back in. And just like that, we are in Crumbling Farm Azula, with all the good stuff it has to offer. If you did not perform it successfully, you will be teleported instead to the site of Grace and not in front of the fog wall. That's okay. Just teleport back to the four belfries site of grace and rest. You have to rest by the site of grace, it is crucial. Then go through the portal and attempt the warp again. The trick is not to teleport to Castle War Tunnel after using the memory of grace quickly, but to do it slowly enough just before memory of grace finishes its cast. It's a lot simpler than it sounds, and what you can do is strain your ears and listen to the memory of grace cast sound to time your teleport. Once in Crumbling Farm Azula, unlock the Grace location after the big dragon encounter and obtain the ancient dragon prayer book from the middle of the hole. After obtaining the prayer book, go back to Lurenia of the Lakes region, go over here on the map and use the air vent to unlock East Raya Lucaria gate. Use the Grand Lift of Dectus and gain access to the Altus Plateau region. Head to the first spanning grey bridge and use the portal to teleport to the other side of the crumbling bridge. Unlock the site of grace below the bridge, follow the road southwest, and you will encounter a moving caravan. Simply jump on the caravan and open the chest to obtain the great star's great hammer. Keep following the road and head to the corpse tent shack to obtain the golden vow incantation over here on the map. Afterward, Head to the sealed tunnel to obtain the miner's spell bearing 2. Now equip Radagon's sword seal talisman, use flame of the red mains on the great stars, and make sure to use all the golden seeds and the sacred tears, as well as both strength and face tears in the flask of wonders physic. Then head to the lakeside crystal cave over here on the map. Make your way to the mini boss room deep inside the mine, two hand the great star's hammer and use heavy charged R2 to break his sense. Then simply spam R1 until you defeat him and obtain minor spell bearing 1. Now teleport to Fort Pharos and equip Blood Slash Asha 4 on the Uchi Katana with the Blood Affinity. Stay mounted and slash the Elder Dragon with the katana. As soon as you defeat him and see his tail twitch, rush to the site of grace and quickly rest. If done correctly, you will be awarded 50,000 runes and the Elder Dragon will remain alive for more farming. I have done this precisely 4 times and accumulated 200,000 runes. Teleport to the round table hold and offer the belt bearings to the twin maiden husks. Buy 12 of each smithing stone to upgrade the great stars to plus 12. You will end up with enough runes to level your character to 42. I also would like to give you a rough idea of what your stats should look like at different stages in the game. Here are our stats at level 50. At level 100 I removed Radagon's Sword Seal Talisman, replaced it with the Lightning Scorpion Charm 
and adjusted the sets accordingly. And here are our final sets at level 150. When you obtain a second gravel stone seal from a friend or new game plus, use the sets template from the original build. Please feel free to adjust the sets to accommodate your play style better. Equip Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength incantations and buy the Finger Seal to cast them. Make sure to spend any remaining runes you have on more smithing stones. Now teleport to the Divine Bridge site of Grace and rest there. And attempt the wrong warp method we used before, but this time to gain access to Lindel, Royal Capital. Again, you will know you have done successfully if you teleported in front of the fog wall, not the Grace location. If you didn't get it right, simply teleport back to the Divine Bridge, site of Grace, rest and try again. Once in the capital, go to the fortified manor and explore around. Lure that knight inside the manor and defeat him to obtain the gravel stone seal, the best seal for our build. If you are having trouble defeating him, make a small distance between you and him and as soon as he starts to cast his lightning strike, rush and backstab him. Also, the Great Star's hammer has a very disruptive R1 attack. Afterward, head to the artist's shack over here on the map and defeat the patrolling knight to acquire the Dragon Cult prayer book. Now head to the Church of Vows over here on the map and present both the Dragon Cult prayer book and the Ancient Dragon prayer book to Miriel, Pastor of Vows. Buy Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike, Horned Bolt, and Lightning Spear incantations, and upgrade the Gravel Stone Seal to plus 13. And remember, if you need more runes, simply farm the Elder Dragon at Fort Pharos. To the board to the grand left of Dectus, Site of Grace, and make your way up the hill to reach the Frenzy Flaming Tower. Climb the ladder and open the chest to obtain Howl of Shabriri incantation. Afterward, Head to the minor air tree over here on the map and defeat the air tree avatar to obtain the lightning shrouding crack tier and replace it with the strength tier in the flask of wonders with it. It is vulnerable to fire so use the flame of the red man's ash of war. We are pretty much done at this point. I went ahead and one shot at market the fell omen at level 43. And since we have an extra talisman slot now, I defeated Godfroy the Grafted over here on the map to obtain the Godfrey Icon Legendary Talisman. It will increase the damage of charged incantations like Lightning Spear and Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike by 15%. I will not go into details on how the build performs and what endgame items you should try to obtain because I already listed all this information and more in the main build video. Although this is eventually going to be a pure face lighting build, you should upgrade the Uchi Katana and use the Electrify Armament incantation. It is the only method in the game where you can have a lightning damage on the weapon that scales directly with face and not dexterity. I spent a lot of time optimizing this route to end up with a face lighting build that is powerful and equally fun to play right from the start of the game. However, if you can think of more ideas to make it even better, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.